time has come to visit our final Disney park. Welcome to Tokyo Disney Sea. Hands out just to celebrate for us. Look at this. Here we are at our 12th and final Disney park in the world, Tokyo Disney Sea. This park opened in 2001 and it looks absolutely stunning. Different ports of call we're going to be visiting today. And of course, we've got a numerous amount of rides, attractions and shows all on the way. I just can't believe that we're here right now. I first watched and heard about this park the year it opened and thought, oh my God, one day I'd love to go. I never thought that I'd be standing here in June 2017. Just look at it. 16 years later, we're here. One of the most expensive theme park builds ever, and we're here to come and see it. Of course, the centerpiece of this beautiful park, Mount Prometheus, a gigantic volcano, home to a number of attractions, and of course, that focal point of this park. Every Disney park has a focal at some point, and I can't wait to see this one as we make our way through into the Mediterranean harbour. Look at this. None of this is false perspective, this is real. It is fantastic, it really is. And you've got Hotel Miracosta just off to the right as well. So you've got a hotel actually built into the entrance, very Disneyland Paris style, so to speak. Look at this, wow. Hello. Hi. Well, let's point it out again, if you didn't see our vlog from yesterday, I take you to Disneyland, the best cast members I've ever seen. Wow, look at this. And here it is. Oh my God, look at it. Everything is 100% themed. Wow. That view. Oh my God. <laughs> I just can't believe we're here to see you for the first time. Join us throughout the day for on-ride POVs, off-ride shots, shows. It really is going to be incredible. I just can't wait to discover everything about this park. Wow. How gorgeous is that? I'm literally breathtaking. Everywhere you look, theme in, detail. Here we are. <laughs> Wow. So we've literally been in the park five minutes now and I'm blown away already by the buildings, the detail, the rocks everywhere. It is just... The number one part. It, it's breathtaking, already. isn't it? Already the number one part. I knew it would be at some point, but I never thought it was from this quick. Just the theming is just... I've never seen anything like it. You've got the electric like railway just up there as well. There's so many little areas to explore in this park. Look at that. This has got so much character to it. Welcome to the American waterfront. Big Bam Beat just there. And there she is. A very different Tower of Terror, not inspired by the Twilight Zone. No words can describe this place. I can't put it into a category. You can't oh. believe the theming. Oh my god. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I'm just so shocked. I've wanted to visit here for so long and just, it's so weird walking around the park knowing that I've watched like walkthrough videos and wow, look at the steam liner. I just can't believe it. The amount of detail here that's gone into one thing and it's all been put together to create something spectacular. I mean, look at the architecture of that.
So welcome to Hotel Hightower. Look at this. The detail in here, all the paintings all the way around the side, the chandeliers. Very different to the lobby of the Tower of Terror around the world, the other different versions of this ride. I mean, it's so different, isn't it? You're not getting a lot out of me today, mate. I'm just speechless. The stained glass up there is really nice. A bit more interior queue line here than the other lobby areas. But I like that because it gives you time to appreciate all these details all the way around. Harrison Hightower. Look at the elevator. Wow, you got the cable what snapped in there as well. see some things on this trip but this really was the pinnacle moment for me and the fact we're here this is it. <laughs> and the fact that this probably isn't even going to be the star attraction in this park it's even more crazy to think Inside here is stunning. I absolutely love the pre show in there. Unfortunately, with an attraction like this, with it being in Japanese, it is quite hard to understand the story. But in terms of the visuals, it is amazing. <laughs> We got all the different artifacts, so to speak, from the hotel. That pre show was really, really good, though. Really built an atmosphere. Quite a few jump scares in there as well. There's so much to see, isn't there? Okay, so we've just come off Tower of Terror, and wow, I'm really impressed with the overall feel of that, the theming, and it was really nice to see a version without the Twilight Zone. That ride told the story of Harrison Hightower, and what we actually did was go make our journey up to the top of the hotel, and to his private sort of residence, uh, which has been cursed by this little statue thing. I'm not too sure on the name of it, but there's some little statue thing. I could, I could see really follow, Yeah, yeah. And, Obviously he was projection mapped at the start in the pre-show and he basically followed us through our journey so to speak. So once we boarded I really liked the whole sort of area before you actually get into the elevator. You go into like a little room and it's all like fenced off so it's a bit more enclosed which is quite nice. Uh, so I did enjoy that. And then in terms of the actual ride itself, very very similar uh, to the likes of Disneyland Paris version of Tower of Terror and the fact that you move backwards and then you've got some scenes. You've got the usual sort of disappearing scenes, uh, the one where you see yourself in the mirror and it moves about. It was really really good, the theme in there was very 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 good. Uh, I loved the whole feel, definitely my favourite themed version of it uh, because of everything there is to see. In terms of the ride system, 
Uh, it's the same ride system, however, you actually have a seat belt what comes over your shoulder as well as around your laps where it actually restricts airtime. I say that, it wasn't actually that much airtime. You can tell that the ride system itself has actually been tamed down a little bit. Whether that's to fit in just because they wanted it to be a little bit of a toned down version for families or it's more the culture over here, the fact that they are very big on safety and we had this uh, restraint sort of over us, this seat belt. Uh, yeah, the actual ride system itself, I hardly got any airtime at all on that, which I was expecting it to be the same ride system. Obviously, when you watch your POV, you just assume that it's going to be the same ride system in terms of airtime. Uh, to, and, and with that different theming. But overall, very, very good. Still doesn't top the Tower of Terror in Florida for me in terms of the ride system, but I do prefer the theme of this. I think the exterior is one of the most gorgeous ride exteriors out there in the world. I think that is gorgeous. It's an overall experience. I loved it. In my computer background for the last seven months and now it's actually here in front of me. It is gorgeous, Incredible. isn't it? Yeah, really, really lovely. And it's quite a dark sort of theme in there as well with the yeah, whole voodoo of thing and yeah maces and knives and, and all sorts of yeah, stuff isn't it quite, it's, yeah it's quite a, intense and then to go on the ride if anything don't be put off by us saying that the ride wasn't as intense because the theme and the story is superb it is definitely i think that's what's more important about this park it's not about big intense rides there are no roller coasters massive roller coasters at all in this park it's all about your dark rides your experienced rides and your theming like this but yeah i've come out of that i'm not disappointed with it uh, but i haven't come off feeling like very overwhelmed mainly because of the actual ride system itself but the theming 10 out of 10 the story 10 out of 10 and it was just really nice to get on a different version and our final version of that ride to get on tower of terror well worth coming out to see though especially if you're a big tower of terror fan such as myself uh, really really stunning ride look at the exterior of that though and it looks even better at night can't wait to see it later here we are in Cape Cod. Look at this. Of course, you've got Prometheus just in the background there. And all these buildings, all the waterfront just here. It is so nice. There's so many details in this park as well. I just can't believe that we're here. I'm so excited to see it all. There's little things that I like reading as well on the walls. There's little things like that. Welcome visitors. Cape Cod Village greeting place. the corner then from the American waterfront. And wow, look at this, Aquatopia. That looks amazing. Such a clever ride system how this works as well. Port Discovery. Hello. Oh, I love the look of that. I can't believe they were actually here seeing it. Some really unique attractions here, there really is. Mixed in with some of the best theming I've ever seen. When you're, it when really you're, is gorgeous. When you're at Disneyland in California, you feel immersed in the magic here, you feel lost in it. Yeah, you really do. Everywhere you look. 360. Some really nice scores throughout this park as well, really good soundtracks. It's just so nice walking around this park and seeing it for the first time and videos and pictures, I've said this a lot this trip, but videos and pictures really don't do it justice. Of course, I always try to capture the, it really well in the vlogs, but it's just so hard when it's such a gorgeous park. You really need to be here and walking around and looking around 360 to be able to really see the detail in this park. Two of our most anticipated attractions down this way. Journey to the centre of the earth and 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> it's so weird actually real saying real. that. It's real, real. Is this really happening? Hello. We've just joined the 80 minute queue. We're journeying to the center of the earth. 
I don't believe it's sunny. <laughs> we have also got a fast pass for later on as well. We managed to get one of those for early afternoon. This is one of the ones where I thought, we've got to see the main queue as well. We've got a fast pass for later. But I just want to see the main queue and get immersed into it. Look at this, all the detail everywhere. This is a hashtag Sean Spotwork paradise. It really is, yeah, there's rocks everywhere. I can't wait to get on this ride, of course. Uh, it's going to take us all the way through, right down into the centre of Mount Prometheus. And so many special effects in here. It looks visually stunning, this ride. Again, it's not a thrill ride, it's an experience ride. And I absolutely love experience rides. And the fact that we're about to do this for the first time, I've wanted to do this for so many years, I really have. I feel so immersed in this park, and we haven't hardly seen anything yet. I, I do fear for Pirates of the Caribbean in Shanghai that this may top it. it I don't know. It's going to be close. It's going to be loggerheads for me, and, and that is scary. But I can't wait. as well. Here we go, so the time has come to ride Journey to the Centre of the Earth. We've waited about 45 minutes, it was advertised as 80. We're about to get down into the lift. Oh my god, it's amazing, isn't it? I don't know what's about to happen. The queue line is very, very nice. All the rocks all the way around. Lots of little things to see and read on the wall. Not loads and loads of like little things, but there's some nice stuff in places in that queue line, which is great. It is a big cattle pen, but it's all inside this beautifully themed building. Even the roof's themed. Are you ready for your journey? I'm ready. We'll see you when we come off journey to the centre of the earth. come off journey to the center of the earth a huge dark ride located all the way around this area and wow that has to be the most beautiful and visually stunning ride I've ever been on and I've been on some rides especially in the past couple of weeks we've been on some of the best and most immersive dark rides and experienced rides in the world and let's just say that ride had a lot of hype from a lot of people who've been here that I know I've watched numerous videos of it myself I've watched videos on its construction, the technical stuff behind it, and let's just say I've not come off that and felt disappointed. Journey to the centre of the earth, 
is a stunning dart ride that is filled with so much to look at. Of course, the ride vehicles itself make it even better because you're sitting in like this vehicle watch that keeps going down and down deeper into the journey. And it's beautiful, the sets in there, the lighting, the audio, and it's actually quite, it starts off quite a relaxing experience with all your steampunk style theming around. You actually go down in an elevator first which takes you down into the station. Station area is huge, massive building. Uh, and then you start off on this journey. It's not a very long dark ride. It's probably around three or four minutes long. It's not massive in length, but it starts off quite relaxing and you're there with your mouth just open like, oh my God. Uh, and then as you make your way through it, you've got some flame effects and you turn that corner You've got the huge animatronic in there, this huge monster creature down there. And then it's, wow, we need to escape. And now POVs don't do it justice. Obviously, on a POV, you don't get the sort of feel for the speed. It was actually a very sort of similar sort of speed to that of Test Track. Like, you really had a big jolt forward. But very man, we're on the front row. It had some speed to it as we came all the way around this section. Uh, then right around the top just there, some brilliant head choppers. It is stunning. That is, of course, my number one dark ride. Uh, and it's, it's just so visually impressive. It's not just the ride, though, for me with that. It is the queue line, and it is the area that it's in as well. Everything about it, and even the exit steps, is so well-themed. And then walking outside back into this, wow, it is stunning. Journey to the centre of the earth. Like I say, what an impressive dark ride that really is. But to be fair, Mystic Manor, uh, absolutely incredible. Pirates of the Caribbean, absolutely incredible. And this, absolutely incredible. There's not much in between at all. And as I said before we came on, all three are very, very enjoyable. And I love all three of them to bits. What an amazing experience. And that is just crazy. It really is beautiful. The best thing ever. Like, it's so natural, it feels so... I mean, you're going through the queue line, you're warm, it's getting hotter as you go through the queue and if you're going deeper and darker to the journey, to the centre of the earth, and I can't even describe it. Oh my God. Incredible. Yeah, it is. I've come off that ride stunned like I have done so many times this trip. You might be thinking, oh, hang on a minute, Sean and Alex are just things saying things are overwhelming each other and topping things. Honestly, they are all amazing. We're not like, going to do Lally. This yeah, is not... they are all absolutely amazing. Mystic Manor. You know, I feel exactly the same about that. I feel exactly the same about Pirates. And I feel exactly the same about that. My top three dark rides out there. And just an experience. But in terms of a theme park, this is the best themed park I've ever seen. Like, I'm so immersed in it you know, right now. And we haven't even seen all the ports of call yet. It's certainly the best, best second gate Disney park. Oh God, in yeah, the world. it really is. It's, it's, it's the, the most, it's the best Disney gate. park in the world, yeah. in my opinion. And we've hardly seen anything yet. Wow. Uh, I mean, look at this. You've got all this sort of rivers the area, area where the boats go round. Yeah, it's actually the detail. There's so much to see, and unfortunately, as much as I'm going to try and capture as much as I can do, this is really a park where you need to come here and get immersed into it. Just look at it, everything. But yeah, Junior to the Centre of the Earth sits there at number one. Number one dark ride. Good luck that. I think it'll be a very long time until we ride something of that level of detail. And, and look at it. It's the fall around you. It's 360. There is not a stone on turn. There's no false perspective. There's no hidden cameras. There's nothing. It's just blooming beautiful. And yeah. Oh yeah, it really is. I could stay in this area alone all day, to be honest. Wow. That did not disappoint you. I had a lot of hype from a lot of people. And normally when you get a lot of hype from rides, you might come off and be a bit underwhelmed. With that, I really didn't. But it was actually a very relaxing experience. And then towards the end, the chase was on. And I was really surprised, actually. It is more of a thrill ride. I thought it was a bit more of a, a family ride. To be honest, to near the end, it's quite an intense experience. Yeah, it is very test track and very Radiator Springs racers. So, yeah, brilliant. What an amazing attraction. And, Wow, we've seen some incredible things this trip. We really have. So thankful for coming and doing this trip. It's, yeah, it really is. I'm gonna want more than two days in this park. I will 100% be back here at some point in the future. I love it to bits. So many details, let's have a look, look at this. So journey to the center of the earth, my first exploration of this volcano and the mysteries at the center of the earth 
began with my creation of this amazing drilling device. Open the door to the unexplored forces beneath the earth. Forces that can move the earth or destroy it. Love this. Of course, a bit about Mount Prometheus. The powerful force of nature that created this island are still active beneath our feet. It is my quest to harness that power and utilize it for the future of mankind. And what we've got coming up next, of course, we've got the Nautilus down at the bottom and 20,000 leagues under the sea. The sea has many secrets and much to teach us. I have devised a fleet of submarine boats to expedite my exploration of the sea's bounty. Wow, I love little things like that. And the good thing is, 20,000 leagues under the sea is only our 35 minute wait at the moment. We're doing really well today, bear in mind it's not even 11 o'clock yet. And we've got a fast pass for later on as well. Let's come back on due to the center of the earth. I have never seen a theme park like this before. Let's look at the theming, it's amazing. of the British money there is down there. I thought there would be a great deal, but there is now. And for once, I'm the milk drinker. I'm only joking, I'm only holding them for it. Yeah. <laughs> How many milks did you have just? Five, so that's nine today so far. Oh my god. And it's only 11 o'clock. Let's talk about some of the details in this queue line again. Most like every Disney park out there, everything is built to last. I'm loving all the ceiling in here and this whole steampunk area. And look at this. So many little details, I love it. That's the best thing about these attractions. So much to see. Even one scene like that, I'd kill for anything like that in the UK. Just one scene in one queue. It's got as much detail as this. I just love this whole feel. I mean, it's Disneyland Paris what got me into Steamboat for Discovery Land. And here you are, six parts later. So <laughs> good, as you see. Time to balls. 20,000 leagues under the sea. This was really nice. Journey to the 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> Look at this. Really nice ride vehicles on this yet again. Wow. This place just keeps getting better, doesn't it? This trip just keeps getting better. And we might only have a few vlogs left to go, but I really hope you've enjoyed the journey with us. The journey to the center of the earth. Look at this. Let's see. What about this week, yeah? Here we are, look at this. Lots of little details in here, and you got all these little viewing windows around the side. Pressures are good, Sam, bro. just so you know. Pressures are good. Hashtag good pressure. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
バックアップのパワーが低下していますスタートレベルも危険な状態ですエネルギーの消費を最小限に抑えろ了解どうだ浮上させられるかダメですまだコントロールが回復してる<笑>船長潜水艇が戻りましたアメリカは、最大のミステリアスアイランドは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあります。私たちは、最も大きなスピンパークアリアを見たことがあり On the Nautilus, and obviously seeing all these scenes. Very, very clever how he's doing. Like a suspended monorail through this dark ride. It's crazy to think that inside all this rock work, hashtag rock work, there's two massive dark rides. It is crazy, really. And the show buildings completely disguised. It's not another note. I love all these boats going around. We will have to have a go at them at some point, either today or in the day two vlog. Uh, but yeah, it was really immersive. I really liked how on the portholes you had like all the little water effects to make it really feel like you were underneath the water. Because obviously you weren't. Uh, but yeah, very, very clever. I really like that. So very good animatronics. But one bug with that ride is I struggled to see a little bit. I'm not sure if that was because I was uh, sitting next to Alex on the bench and I didn't get much room to see. But, uh, <laughs> or yeah, not. That's the issue. I thought. <laughs> I had to give that one another go. I've made a bench. But uh, yeah, the portholes are a little bit small on that, so you can't really yeah, see out that one. There's some waves in the background there. There's some waves. Hello! Yeah, Theme Park Worldwide on YouTube. Check it out. Have a good day. Yeah. Oh, the people are so friendly over here, they really are. Uh, but yeah, really nice dog ride. Again, one of my favourite dog rides out there. Uh, brilliant, that one. What's that? <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! Theme Park Worldwide on YouTube. Yeah! Ready? Have a good day. He loves it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Did he plan that or something? Woo! Some strangers coming here in some bottle court. Bye. Right. What the hell? They love it over here. And, oh, I love Japan. It's amazing. It really is. I want to come straight back to Japan. What an amazing Funny country. Flavor. It really is. Funny play, very nice. Yeah, what a really nice dog. Some very clever lighting effects in there as well. The lighting was top class. The audio was lovely. And a really nice ride system. Very enjoyable. Look at this though, 360 immersion in this area, all the way round. If one theme park in the UK could just build one area like this, then we'd love it. You never go board again? I know. <laughs> Time to discover our next port of call, Lost River Delta. Home to Indy! I can't believe a part like this has still got so much more to give. Indiana Jones and a more up-to-date version of Indiana Jones as well that I can't wait to see. This is the best dark rides in the world, is that the It is crazy, it really what, is. The ride that's been our number one for a good 18 months. And here we've got another version of it. Look at this, very nice. You can see a bit of fuego up there, a few flame effects going on. I wonder what the queue line is like for this one as well. Obviously, at Disneyland, with it being built technically outside the boundaries of the park, so to speak, you've got a really long queue line that takes you outside and be interesting to see. However, that is absolutely gorgeous. You actually see that from my hotel as well, just at the top of that. It's a nice way you go. Everyone loves a good temple. Look at that. Hashtag Sean's Temple.
Bristol School and not the... Uh, not Forbidden Eye. Yeah, Forbidden Eye. I mean, me personally, I think Forbidden Eye, even though it's the older version, by what, quite a few years, six years, yeah. I, I just think it... I, I, I liked it, it a lot more. a little bit more. There's a lot more dark scenes in there, a lot more scenes where there's nothing really happening, and still beautiful, incredible, still better than that. Oh, oh. you get pushed by another one. <laughs> uh, and another one, hey. and another one. Oh, it's a party. Hey. And, uh, party and another, another one. Hey. It's all right, it's all right. But no, um, it's, it's nice, but it's Yeah, different. it was still a very incredible dark ride. I mean, all these Disney dark rides are great, but... For me personally, it just, I just didn't have the same impact. Well, that's because we've done so many more advanced possibly, dark rides since. So. But there was definitely quite a few changes. Obviously, it was the same layout in there uh, as what you do get uh, on, on the California sets, version. Very different sets. Yeah. No fire in this one. No. I didn't realise actually I got on the ride. No fire. I missed coming around that corner and seeing the fire and then the still like you were going to lose your eyebrows. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was very nice. There was quite a lot of UV in the main scene. It was more like a blue purple yeah. colour instead of the normal sort of orange and reds, if you know and what I mean. No real projection mapping yeah, like yeah. the other Indiana Jones in California seems to have, but not a disappointing round. Oh no, it was very, very enjoyable. I loved it, and the fact that it still fits into this incredible part. And to be fair, know. as a facade, it's very, more, very much more impressive than California. It California. is, yeah, the facade. Because California's so tucked away, really. Mm. You can't see it at all, but the queue line for that. Uh, yeah, all being indoors and everything's very, very good. With this one, it is a queue line Maybe outside with a little bit of indoor stuff. But don't get me wrong, it was lovely. It was still yeah. great to see it. We, we tried to keep an eye on the globe, but the globe wasn't there, so we kept an eye on the Crystal Skull instead. The Crystal Skull. Two very different versions of the ride, actually. They might, yeah, they've got the same layout. Uh, an interesting fact for if you don't know, there's also Dinosaur is the same layout of both of these as well. The same ride system with the same layout. Uh, it's hard to see here, but if you follow it closely, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you get to see it, the same well, sort of ride system. That, thank you for telling me. Did you me. not know that? No, but I can see it now. I can uh, see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, same layout on all of I them. I did dinosaur. I was terrified of dinosaurs as a kid, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so the first time I did dinosaur, I was on my own. And I was on there, and the photo of me, I think I've still got it somewhere, I'll have to show you at some point. I was horrified, but no. Yeah, I'm so pleased we've impressive. done that, it was very, very nice. And again, two very different versions of the ride. Both of them, I really enjoyed. And nature's very enjoyable. really taken its toll over that as well, isn't it? Well, like the trees are going through it, it's covered in green yeah, and moss, and all sorts of bits and pieces. Look, the signs, everything's starting to, like, a road, a road, is that the term? Yeah, yeah. It looks good. It does it look does. good. I really do love that ride system, though. I'd love to see more attractions with that ride system. I do think it's fantastic. And it's a very thrilling, like, you get to the end, you're like, oh my God, phew, you know, oh, we're alive. But uh, yeah, really enjoyed that. Indiana Jones. Yeah, so go yeah, Disney Sea. <laughs> He's famous, isn't it, for his bit of street entertainment. That was incredible. And that, look at that, he just comes along, stands here on the bridge, puts on a little show. He got a bit of interaction there. I think he was like, oh my God, he's tall. A little bit too big. Little things like that are what really make Disney parks. But here, they really take that street there to the next level. And there's so much little things like that, what I've seen all the way around the park that I can't wait to witness. Look at this, it is gorgeous. This part just keeps excelling itself. It's the best theming I've ever seen. I love it to bits. I can't wait to go on the boat ride all the way round. Have you ever played tennis with a feather duster before? <laughs> I can't say I have. Very Stuff like good. that's incredible though, isn't oh, it? It's amazing. Just little it things. It really adds to the park. And the fact that you think he's just a normal cleaner going along and 
and then does all that. You know, he's very, very good. Fits in very, very well, doesn't he? Very Do you well. reckon he actually picks up litter in between? Off the yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Disneyland Paris, or should I say a better version? Look at this. All fire effects there in the waterfall. That's really cool. Raging spirits. This looks really nice. Oh, I'm loving the effects around here. All the smoke around there as well. This is stunning. I'm loving the flames up there though. Look at that. So there might not be any massive coasters inside this park. But they've got this and it has got a loop in it. I like how they've worn that here as well. Turbulent ride, 360 degree loop. Just for anybody who uh, doesn't want to experience that, of course we are, it's a cred. Cred's a cred. Very nice. As much as the theming around Raging Spirits does look fantastic, it's got a 90 minute queue at the moment, so we'll uh, come back a little bit later on for that one and hope it dies off. Look at this, welcome to the Arabian coast. This is absolutely gorgeous. Over here you've got Jasmine's flying carpets. The architecture is amazing. Bear in mind this park opened back in 2001. It looks like it opened like earlier this year. It's so fresh, so new. And that's to be had with all the different parks that we've visited on this trip. They've all looked very clean and especially all the Disney parks, they've been incredible. I don't know what Alex is doing over there. Sinbad's voyage, five minute wait, let's five go. Five minute wait for Sinbad's voyage, oh my god, let's go. Well, they've all confirmed it, how amazing is that? Five minute wait for a dark ride, can't complain. I'm not complaining about that. Now this is basically a cross between Pirates of the Caribbean and it's a small world from looking at the POVs. Probably the biggest building you've ever seen for it's a small world style ride as well. Wait to see inside. This is gorgeous, look at this, oh I'm loving it. I'm just saying, Alex, doesn't everything look so fresh? Don't you think, Alex? Oh, sorry. Everything looks so fresh. It does. Clean. I'm so lost. I'm like. Lost in the magic. Yeah, literally. Oh, Get lost God. inside the magic. <laughs> Coming up later this year. He's on Paris. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's so nice. The detail on these buildings and the fact that all the show buildings as well have been completely covered up and themed. Not a warehouse in sight. Let's go. <laughs> Very nice loading area, isn't it? Okay. Lovely really station, really good, yeah, and the animatronics there do look really good. Let's go.
キンドバッド魔法の楽器で乱暴者の猿たちをなだめるのじゃ biggest surprise of the trip really for me I mean I have seen that ride before in videos but again it's one of everything videos does it justice and you need to be just sitting on it that's really gorgeous dark ride got to be one of the nicest feel Disney dark rides I think it was lovely it's also very long as well that can't have been far off 15 minutes that was a really really long Good ride as well five yeah. minute wait for the ride and oh oh was, God, so many boats the boats were really nicely themed and it was a cross between it's a small world and pirates wasn't it uh, some brilliant animatronics in there, though. The animatronics were, were really good. Terrifyingly real, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, they were. I mean, there's really some great really scenes in there, wasn't they? Uh, I can't believe it. Look at the show building as well. That's a huge show building. It really is. And the scenes in there, it was gorgeous. Yeah, it was really, really nice how they thought about the roof as well, because obviously with the rooms being so tall and so big, uh, they put like little clouds and things in. And at the end scene there, you saw they had like the fireworks, a bit like Three Calabreras really. Had they had the fireworks on the walls and stuff. I thought that was really, really lovely. Probably my biggest surprise actually, the trip that one, mainly because it was just so nice. It was lovely. It was more of a, a show than a dark ride. It was telling the stories you went round. The soundtracks really flowed nice between scenes. The lighting in there was great. There were some really bright scenes and some really dark scenes. I just thought it was overall a lovely Disney dark ride. Really, really like that. And it's even better, like, just in the area. I mean, look at it. Arabian Coast. This park is like something I've never seen before. And we've seen some brilliant stuff on this trip, including Shanghai Disney, which is absolutely gorgeous too. All of these parks, if you can come and do a trip like what we've done, then go for it. Don't because do this park for a day. Yeah. Don't do it for two days. Come for a week. Come and immerse yourself in the magic and I honestly. could spend a week at Tokyo Disney and stay in one of the hotels and do each park here for a few days, you know, I'd love to. I just don't think two days in each park is enough. Maybe two days you could squeeze everything in over at Disneyland next door, but this if you really want to see everything and immerse yourself in the restaurants and see all the shops and attractions, shows, walkthroughs, it is the ultimate Disney park. I've just never seen theming quite like it. Everything. So many little alleyways and places to walk around. We're just walking around like, what the hell? It's so nice. It really is. We thought this time 18 months ago, California is the best it can be. I know, yeah, it is crazy how things move on, but I still love California to bits. I love them all, and as I've said, get yourself to any Disney park out there. Now I've seen them all, there isn't one that I think is bad. Visit all of them if you can, do what we've done, you will not regret it, you yeah, really won't. Time and tell us about it, even in more time, spread it out over a couple of years. Um, and we, we have mentioned, Sean and I ourselves, that we've actually only done five of the six Disney parks but since 2014, yeah. which is strange. I mean, you did Paris obviously growing up. I did Walt Disney World growing up. And we've done five Disney resorts in the space of three years, which is incredible. It is crazy, isn't it? And three within the space of uh, and two and a bit weeks. weeks. Yeah. Oh, wow. This place didn't really get any better. Look at the areas. Really nice doubles that carousel. Like theater right there. Look at this. Yeah, that's where you've got your like a Aladdin based and show. And extended queue line for a restaurant, for a food court. It is crazy. I've never known anything like it. Uh, Gorgeous theme park. 
I'm so immersed in it right now, I really am. I can't wait to see it in the dark. Oh, it's going to be even better at night. So much lighting everywhere. Beautiful. another of the ports now. We thought before we do all the attractions in each one, let's just walk around and see all the ports of call first. This is Mermaid Lagoon and this is gorgeous. If you keep I, saying gorgeous, that's the word of today. If I never saw another theme park again, say I've seen this. I know, yeah, I'm so pleased that we've come and done this and please just come and see it, even if you don't go and see any of the others what we've done. Come to Japan, the people are so lovely, the food's fine if you're a fussy eater, uh, everything is just sorted. And when we get back, we're going to do a big video and talk about everything and summarise everything from all the vlogs. So make sure you check that out. It'll be online a couple of weeks after we get back. I mean, just look at that. That's beautiful in its own. All the fountains and waterfalls. I've never been so immersed in a theme park. We've got Aladdin. Look at that over in the distance. You're in the little mermaid area of the park. I'm going to have to go here and have an explore. Let's have a little look and see what's inside. Hey, King Triton! Look at this. So many details. <laughs> Triton's Kingdom. So this is an indoor part of Mermaid Lagoon. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? Look at the lighting. Oh my. It is so immersive. I've seen photos of this. I didn't realise it was going to be quite as big as it is. <laughs> this vlog does really not do this justice. It really doesn't. I'm trying my best, guys, but... Please come out here and see this. Yeah, you need to see for yourself this one. You really do. Speechless walking around now, aren't we? I never heard Alex say not speak so much. That looks really nice. A jellyfish. I was worried about not seeing UK parts the same when I went home. I'm worried about not seeing Walt Disney World the same when I return. Yeah. But Walt Disney World is very, very different. It's just. It's not a bad, it's not it's bad. It's no, just, it's just the same things that Animal Kingdom and Epcot are fantastic, but yeah, it is mental. Like I say, there's things that I enjoy about every Disney resort in the world. I can't even describe it. I didn't come here. Impossible. Mediterranean Harbour. I've got a new term, a new word, incomprehensible. What does that mean? <laughs> you can't comprehend how incredible this place really is. It's too big a word for me, that, don't you think, viewers? Well, I, don't, it, I can't say, it, say it, people's it. names, come on. Say it. What? Incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. Beautiful. I, I can say things when you, you say it first. When it's broken well, down you on got paper. a piece of paper That's for a me, nice yeah. struggle. Look at this, it's just gorgeous, it really is. I've used that word way too much, but... You can just 
just sit here and relax. It is a relaxing park, it's worth pointing out. It's not a very sort of get up and rush round park. It is all about sort of taking your time and immersing yourself. And we've got so much to see here, but we've done well with what we've seen this morning. We really have, we've soon got round and I'm pretty got immersed, stuff. I'm not gonna lie. I've never been so immersed in a theme park. I really haven't. Just looking round and My seeing door it all. Closed. I love it. And of course that's back to the park entrance through the archway. <laughs> street entertainment going on down there. The scores played throughout the park are so nice as well. Welcome on board the Disney Sea Transit Steamer. This is really cool. It's actually a boat that takes you around all the different seven theme ports that make up Tokyo Disney Sea. Here's the Mediterranean Harbour. I love my rides like this transit systems, monorails, boat rides, trains, whatever it is. We'll have to do the electric railway at some point. And there's numerous stations all the way around, so you can hop on and off which is really cool as well. Good transport ride. Because it is a very big park. It's actually a bigger park than I thought it would be, actually, from looking at videos and stuff. I thought it would all be a little bit more compact. And it's not. It's quite well spread out, actually, which is surprising, which is good, but it's surprising. So much detail on one building. I mean, you've got to think, a Disney Imagineer has had to sit there and design each individual aspect of this park. Like, you imagine you designing one building, where do you start? Never mind a whole theme park like this. So much more than just a theme park, though. Venetian gondolas over there. ポンテベッキオ。アメリカンウォーターフロントにやってきた。左舷に広がるのはニューヨークの港だ。調子線や反線。毎日いろんな船が手入りしている。世界中どこを探したってこんなに忙しい港はないだろうね。左舷前方の
This is one of the rides that I've really been looking forward to in this park. Again, it's another transit system. Look at this, the electric railway. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Buena Vista Street Trolley over at Disney's California Adventure. But this is suspended, of course, up in the air. This looks really, really nice. Can't wait to have a little go on this. Goes all along this track. All the way over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we are about to board the Disney Sea Electric Railway. Look at that. A transit system that takes us from Port Discovery to the American waterfront. It's a one way trip. We'll have to come back on it this way at some point, but look at this, it's really nice. Rides like this have got so much character. Let's get on board. Off we go. It's also worth pointing out that Disney Sea is built next to the sea, so you get some fantastic views of the sea. Aquatopia down there. I love this already. Very similar to the Buena Vista Street Trolley, what you get at the California Adventure. A little bit high off the ground. A little bit high off the ground, better views. Just love transit rides like this, really good. Fantastic views of the high tower. members backstage waving, I mean, really amazing. Wow, look at this. Everywhere you go, I'll have to come back on this at some point. Columbia over there, see people on the deck up there as well. American Waterfront. It really isn't about fantasy themes here, it's all about realism and beautiful sort of natural wonders so to speak. It's very, very nice. I've never seen anywhere quite like it. I want to go to see my Vicky's right there. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Plenty of trams on this as well. Mount Prometheus there, really nice views. Just all the details on every single building. Oh, we even got little streetcars down there as well. Oh, wow. Railway, one of my favourite attractions in the park, so authentic. This is a really nice view around here. And you might have noticed there's still actually Easter orientated things going on. Even though it's June, Easter is still a thing here in Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. Check out our vlog yesterday from Tokyo Disneyland where we go round. I will have a day two vlog to come also, so stay tuned for that one. More street theatre going on around here. All the vehicles going round. Wow. The American waterfront's a massive area. There's so much more for us to discover around here. We'll have to uh, look round it all. And there'll be a day two vlog from here where we try and see as much as we can what we've not seen today. I love it. I love the feel of this place so much. And I only first went to Walt Disney World in 2014, and Alex has been going for a number of years, but I'm sure he'll probably agree that this area is very much like the streets of America that used to be in Hollywood Studios. I've got Studios. photos of me, about eight or nine years old, stood in front of the massive 
like skyline boards. And obviously and there's a lot more detail than that. But this is real. This is it. This is not fake. Nothing there's no here. 2D theming around here. It's, uh, but yeah, just at the first sort of sight, you look at this and think, this is like a better version of the streets of America. So much going on, like the little shows and these street vehicles. I'd love to do them all. I really would. Is that Brum? <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Green version of Brum. Look at them all. Loads of street vehicles. Another one over there. That's three I can see within sight already. Gorgeous. It's kind of like Buena Vista Street and Main Street USA and yeah, it's World a bit like Bazaar. The New York area in um, Universal as well, like the it does. New Jersey sort of side street. It's got a really homely feel. Oh, it's amazing. I love it round here, yeah. Everything there. Another vehicle. How many vehicles is there round here? So many. I love it. Just inside one of the gift shops, and I know I've said this at every Disney park that I've ever been to, but the detail in these gift shops is amazing. It's all done obviously to make you want to buy things, of course it is, but it's great coming in and just looking at all the details, even if you don't intend on buying merchandise. This one here, lots of instruments, look at all those. Some trumpets, saxophones, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, a little bit of dance music outside, I think we should go and have a lot. Let's go and have a gander. It's everything up there, loads of stuff. footpath in Lost River Delta. Everywhere, all the way around. Look at this. <laughs> this is really nice. Obviously you don't have to queue for it, it's just on a footpath. You have photos with them. Interacting, look at this, brilliant. <laughs> We've seen some brilliant street theatres today, and of course, there's quite a few stage shows to see. And of course, the nighttime spectacular, Fantasmic, to come later on tonight. I love these. So cool. <laughs> well, high five that, isn't it? Just little things like no noise, just bless the peace quiet. It's a very relaxing area of the park. <laughs> oh, he's coming in. Hey, you got a high five. So he's very tall, he's tall. Hello. Yeah, he's very big. <laughs> big, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> 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 
you've got my energy to me. You win, you win. Very good, very yeah. good. Thank you. Oh, they go. Wow, great. this is so it. nice. This part really, really is the best pointless, part. But not because the crowds are loving it. This is great. There's just there's just there's street theatre. There's people sat eating ice creams and they're loving it. We've not even timed any of this either. We just walk around the park and every bit of street theatre we've seen today has just been happening when we've been there. When's the last time you looked at the time? Because I haven't looked once today. It's crazy, isn't it? Know, I'm so immersed is. is it the evening? Is it afternoon? So oh. immersed. And it is worth putting out also. I didn't mention it in yesterday's vlog from Tokyo Disneyland, actually. Uh, but there is no Wi-Fi available in these parks. Um, so with there being no Wi-Fi, you actually kind of get a little bit more immersed into it. Obviously, uh, if you've got a you want to pay for data and stuff you can do but if you just want to use your wi-fi bear in mind data is quite expensive over here it makes it a bit more immersive not checking your text and that sort of thing you really do get into it even more got a big photo shoot area there as well you've got um, mickey minnie and goofy all got their own little feeling of course the leader of the club's got the biggest queue 60 minutes but they're there until four past nine this evening which is great so much it's detail oops sorry about the mess gone to get a broom signed goofy Time for a coaster! We're going on raging spirits! And get on this one as well, like we yeah, had to check. He's done the test seat to make sure. I must say, the Fuego on here is fantastic. It's very, very nice, isn't it? Look at that. It's a good 9 out of 10 on the Fuego. Good 9 out of 10. I go 10 out of 10 on the Fuego, to be That's honest. Good. It's running all day. Every time I've walked past, and of course, you've got smoke behind it there as well. And the best thing is, this Fuego's in the water. Let's get on. Where you go? Presented to you by Honda till 9.15 this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Raging Spirits. Host to Kranz. Loads of smoke around the ride. Look at this. Very nice. Feel like I'm back in Disneyland Paris. We go up the left hill. Really nice views of the queue line. The light warning you that it's got a vertical loop on this one. Are we going to get some nice views, do you think? Oh, I think so. Look at that. Wow. Oh, my oh wow. Goodness. Very busy, isn't it? You can see everywhere. Bit of way go. Bit of way go. Never hurt nobody. Here we go. Nice mountain. Car park. <laughs> A multi story is necessary here. Woo! Where you go? A lot smoother than the Indian Paris. It is, it? yeah, a lot smoother. Quite considerably. Off we go. 360 degree vehicle loop. Oh, it's great through the smoke. Airtime! That was nice. Airtime! Airtime! Smoke time! Woo. Hello! Very, very nice. That was really enjoyable, really smooth as well. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous park. We're doing really well for attractions today, actually. I'm quite surprised at how much we're getting on. Well planned and making the most of the fast pass system, of course. You're right there. I love that. So, place your Duffy on the mark and take a photo of him. Oh, you can even strap him in. Just a little seat back with straight. That was Raging Spirits. Incredible. Much smoother than Paris. A lot smoother, wasn't but it? Very yeah, relaxed, yeah. actually. Quite, I mean, obviously, you've got a loop on it. A 360 loop. Yes. Warning in the queue, 360 loop. Yeah. Yeah, but um, no, a very impressive coaster. I thought it was a great family ride. Visually, visually impressive. Yeah, really nice. And of course, the flame effects, all the stones all the way around it. Yeah, I thought it was really, really good. I enjoyed that. It's a firm family coaster, that one. Really enjoyable. Uh, 
Arabian Stitch. Yes. But with a big key, unfortunately. Oh, look at that. Got his little hat on. I love it. I'll have the key for that one all the way down there. Me and Greek Hughes here are very big. Yeah, it's something like Disney. Jack Sparrow couldn't even get two people. <laughs> I think that was the time of day we went. We did walk past on other occasions when he was busy. Hong Kong the meet and greets were quite quiet though. Especially the Star Wars ones. I love it. I just want to spend like a few hours in each area just walking around all the little alcoves and corridors. I will be back here guys, don't you worry. I will be back. That's a promise. It's a promise. I'll be back. I'll be back. So we're just inside the Agrabah marketplace. Look at this, you've even got a flying carpet up there. So many details to see. Give the lamp a bit of a rub. Look at that. Hashtag rubbing that if, lamp. If I, if I rub this lamp hard enough, do you think uh, the genie let me into his cave? I think you'll get three wishes. Do you think? And one of those will be to come back to Disney Sea. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. So many nice little details. We've got little boxer shorts. We've got men's boxer shorts. Aladdin and Jasmine, loads of little details. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Merchandise here is very, very good. Lots of character merch. That's How nice is incredible. that? Well, I bet you're going to be buying that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> genie pillow. A big genie pillow. Yeah, that's nice. Well, well even, even the cast members up the costume. I mean, look at that. Really nice, some brilliant stores. I'm in love, I'm in love with the theme park. <laughs> it is the best theme park in the world, it really is. Welcome to Cape Cod and Sean's food review. We've got something special today. I've not had them yet on this trip, other than from McDonald's. I've got chicken nuggets. Not many there in the pots, but they're very, very nice. Nicely displayed. Let's try one of these. They're really nice quality. I give them a good, good eight. Eight out of ten. We've got the classic Disney chips. Oh yeah, yeah. Good day out of ten. And we got some chocolate cake as well. I'll let you know what I think to that in a minute. Whilst I'm waiting for Alex. Cake cut, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> what you got? I've got a good patty, mate. A good that. patty? Or a pate, as really some people might call it. Patty. Patty. Hey, it is nice. Take it to Disney pen. Resort. My dreams come true. So I've started eating my chocolate cake. Quite small on the chocolate cake. However, I see you've got one as well. Did, it's yeah. very, very nice. It looks nice. The cream's nice next to it. Like that's well, strawberry like cream. cream. Oh, so do I, yeah. Really, really nice. I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. Well, very nice. Sean's food review everybody from Tokyo Disney Sea. It's so strange saying that. God, what a wonderful American area. American meal imaginable. It's just great. I love this park so much and I can't wait to see it in a few hours time when the sun goes down. I think all the different themed areas here at Disney Sea are absolutely gorgeous and you get fantastic views wherever you are inside this park. Including views of Alex on his big cannon. I'm getting laughs and look. And he's got some big ball. cannonballs down there oh, as well. It's a big ball. He got a good stack of cannonballs. <laughs> they're all stacked in like a pyramid as well. I'm loving I, I this can't place. Even look at the people around me because all looking What's at been me. the highlight so far uh, of this part for not you? Feeling awkward like this. No, I can't pick a highlight. Don't ask me to pick a highlight. Just the part. It's stunning. It Incredible is. the rise. Everything. Seeing Hello. the bar. Yeah. Sorry. Hello. Sorry. Theme bar worldwide on YouTube. Check it out. Yeah, Cape Cod. There you go. Got a lighthouse up there as well. It's a what house? Lighthouse. Doesn't look very light. 
I don't know what I was supposed to be, so I'm sorry. Oh, it's so nice around here. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, that She's scared. <laughs> I love how everyone's got the mini ears on and stuff like that. Everybody really gets like into the costumes and everything, don't they? They love it, don't they? It's great! Yeah, everybody's so there good. with the Mickey ears on and you got, you, Duffy and all sorts. 127, whatever that is. Everyone's got all the t shirts on and everything. So it is crazy, isn't it? I love how everybody so gets into it. I'm yeah. So I feel like pretty under Disney, to be honest. At least I've got a Disney Dreams t shirt on. It's better than Miami, Florida. Yeah. Technically, if we're being Pacific, that's a joke for you, Harry, that one. Uh, like the Harry Sandstar! Uh, yeah, I miss you, Harry. I love you. Um, my, uh, Florida is technically where there was a Disney park, so... True, but that's got nothing to do with Disney. Me, right? baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. We've still got quite a few attractions to do, but I think we've done very, very well today with what we've done. and. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. Can't wait to see this park in dark. Can I get a park for throwing you in? Yeah, I think you would. Don't risk it. nice park to pick out of. It's a very advanced ride system, this. Hello. Hi. Have a nice ride. Yeah. It's in the peace symbol. <laughs> I love it. Peace symbol. Look at that. They really thought about throughputs of this as well. Look how many there is. All the way around. We'll have to do this at some point. Aquatopia. I love it. who I know will be watching this video. This is a little science lesson for you. We have a pair of weighing scales up here, right? Some weighing scales. If Sean was stood on this side, and I was stood on this side, which way would it tilt? Which, way, which side would be heavier? What side you're on? Wrong. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm now skinny thanks to this trip. <laughs> yeah. I've been drinking water and that's about it. Too bad, you do a lot. I feel a load better. I don't, I'm, I've not lost a lot, but... Just nice. share with the viewers, like, because you've been counting steps, haven't you, on your phone? Counting, I have like, the statistics like, on my phone. Hang on, one word. moment, one what moment. So, what we got in these jars? As of, oh, hang on. As of two days ago, we so bear in mind, we've done, three days ago, since we've done a lot of walking since, we'd walked 162,841 steps on the Asian mega trip. Which is how many miles? Which, uh, three days ago, was 79.7 miles. I believe, looking at the statistics from the last three days, we've walked over 100 miles this trip. Get you with your statistics. And actually, we've walked, technically I worked this out this morning, we, as of yesterday, walked 118 miles, which is actually the same distance from my house to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. <laughs> we have walked from my house to Blackpool Pleasure Beach on this trip alone. This ain't Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's a little less better themed, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Do you, want, do you want some uh, spicy peppers? Spicy peppers are available. Lots well, of little I'll, details. I love that there's uh, 5.6 inches in there. Oh yeah, 5.6 inches. There you go. There you go. It's a good size. Nice. There's Jasmine down there, meet and greet. Everyone just seems to be a bit sort of crowded around just there. Doesn't look like there's any sort of line. Got an easy escape there, actually. And there he is, just sort of crowded by everyone. Needs a queue line setting up really for that one. Oh my god, it's Jasmine. I think he's gonna meet Jasmine. Jasmine. We'll have to watch a stage show on the hangar stage out of Shadowlands. <laughs> Don't really know anything about this show, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Like the theme out here on the outside. Oh. 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 just come out of the stage show, wasn't allowed to take any footage in there actually, which is quite rare for a Disney stage show. Uh, well, any show at Disney parks normally just say no flash photos, but in that one it was no videoing or anything. And to be honest, I can see why, because it needed to be quite dark inside the theatre for it to work properly, uh, because of the amount of projection mapping. It was a huge stage uh, with projections everywhere. It was really, really nice. At first I was a bit concerned out of work not having physical sets. However, it was great. You had a big screen at the back, uh, with all the visuals, then all the projections down the side. I thought it was great. In terms of the storyline, probably about 
15 actors throughout the whole show. You had this girl, uh, she was sort of exploring with her friends, would you say? Yeah. Friends, yeah. Uh, then she came across like a tent, she went into the tent, something happened. In yeah, the tent. Like some kind of <laughs> spiritual thing happened. Though. It was very futuristic for a it Disney was, show yeah, because there was nice. actually no mention of anything Disney, no Disney characters, no Tarzan, no songs, Indiana Jones, nothing. no nothing. It was all unique. Original. Yeah, it was. Obviously, we say about the storyline, it was all in Japanese. We were warned before going into the theatre by the cast member. About the only thing uh, that was yeah. English with the announcements before and after the show. But yeah, I, really I mean, matter, for us, we enjoyed it and the story was great. Like I say, she was in this tent, she came out, and there was that this big, what would you call it, like a big bird? After it, like a yeah, big, big crow, big or, crow or something, and that actually came on stage. At first, it was on the projections, then it came on stage, uh, which was great as a massive puppet, uh, which was really good. I think the actors who were controlling that were doing a great job. It was actually quite a, a violent scene where she had to get this sword and put it in its mouth. And for a Disney show, it was quite, you know, it was quite a lot going intense. on. It was, yeah, quite intense. And, and Loved yeah, it. It, it flowed really, really nicely, and the score to it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Being the score was amazing. Scores, was I mean, intense. we go and watch these shows, we don't let it put us off that it's in another language. I know it would have most people, but obviously we like going in for the tech side to it. Uh, both being having a bit of a technical background as well. We like all the projection mapping, lighting, audio. Nothing is still more thing. terrifying than listening to Stitch in Chinese. That <laughs> is an experience in itself. And we're like, hopefully at some point on this trip listen to Crush in Japanese. I'm sure it I think will. It'd be pretty scary in itself that one. Definitely. But yeah, it was a really nice show. Obviously it would have been lovely to have heard that in English, but of course we're here in Tokyo Disney Sea, aren't we? Uh, but it'd be great to maybe see something like that over at one of the American parks or even Disneyland Paris because they normally add a bit of English into their shows as well, so who knows? Anyway, we're going on a mystery attraction now. It's actually brand new. It only opened this year. It's Nemo and Friends Sea Rider located in the Marine Life Institute. Look at this, very nice building. Well, it's very, very close to the Finding Dory storyline as well from what I've heard, so I look forward to seeing Look at this, it's some sort of simulator style ride. This looks great, it's a big cube this one. So we'll uh, make our way in and go and check it out. But yeah, it looks really nice, fits in with the whole of Port Discovery around here, beautiful. What an amazing day we've had and we've got Phantasmic soon. I can't wait. I can't wait for a very different version of Phantasmic. Sure, I can't hit the note because I've got the high voice. Let's go have a look. Nemo. Strange walking around Tokyo Disney Sea and hearing different soundtracks from Epcot, but I really do like it. I think they fit with Port Discovery really well. Lovely, yeah, How was your Sea Rider for you? It was a good sim. A good sim, good, good simulator. Nice it was basically Star Tours, but more for families and bigger, wasn't it? Yeah, bigger and more effects as well. A lot more effects. There was water in there. There was a bit of wind. Uh, as well. Quite a bit of sure wind <laughs> from me. Bit windy. It's the food, I tell you. Windy, indie, is that way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was a nice attraction. Five or six minutes long, would you say? Yeah, a pre-show as well, which was quite nice. Um, all in Japanese, but what to expect? Not complaining, by the way, about that. I do, I do love it. It's, it's traditional for the park. I actually kind of don't mind. This is interesting. You might not agree. I actually like that pretty much every attraction is only in Japanese because, like Disneyland Paris, lovely. But I went to France. For, for the French, for the French cuisine, the culture. And some French cuisine? <laughs> I've never seen you eat French cuisine. I, I, I do eat French cuisine quite a bit. Uh, but no, you haven't come to Japan for the cuisine, I've come there's for the food. a theming. lot of English. I, I know that's because the market is mainly from the UK, but here it's so far afield, there's no need for the English language. I think, if anything, it's kind of a bonus. I think extra. it's quite authentic, isn't it, yeah, to be nice. honest? Yeah, I, I do. actually don't like hearing half English, half French. Like, I wouldn't like hearing half English, half Japanese. I think it's just nice having it in Japanese. And also trying to learn the show, 
adds an extra dimension to it. It's quite nice. Yeah, no, I would agree. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but yeah, it was very nice. Like I said, there's a big screen at the front. Interesting, that was not in 3D. Surprising. I like how they're not always building new stuff in 3D, <laughs> though, as well. Just because Star Tours is now in 3D doesn't mean they all need to be. Um, so yeah, it was really nice. Good family attraction, Enjoy that was. The drinking on the yeah, there's loads, isn't there? Loads ringing families, just the same as next door in Tokyo Disneyland. It saves them to buy drinks all the time. It saves a lot of money. It does. It saves a lot of money. It saves a lot of uh, yen yen. Yen yen. yen, dollar, yen. Dollar. But yeah, it was nice that Sea Rider. We're going for a walk on the SS Columbia, aka my ship, because it's the Sean Sandbrook Columbia. In Disney Sea. If you want to go to all decks, you've got to go this way. If you want to go to all lands, you've got to use the other side. If you want to go where? <laughs> and, and deck. And deck. Saturday night takeaway. Here we are. Look at oh, this. It's a big deck, isn't it? It is a big cruise ship. The SS, the Sean Sandbrook oh, Columbia. Look Amazing views from up here as the sun, the sun starts to set. Oh, wow. Big deck. Look at this. It's stunning, isn't it? I can't say I've ever been on a big steam liner or anything before. I don't think I ever will do again. Here we go, let's have a little explore. Oh, it's like the Titanic. Very colourful deck. Where's Rose? Wow, this is really nicely furnished in here. There's a very posh restaurant just down there at the bottom as well. <laughs> Look at this. SS Columbia dining room. This is lovely. I feel like they're going to be the restrooms in the park. Yeah, I reckon so. Oh, this is gorgeous. Million dollar restrooms. There it is. It's from Sandbrook, Columbia. Oh. Oh, yeah. Some of the best views in the park from around here. There's the Liberty Fish Market. Feeding fish every Friday. Fish Friday, that's a weather spoon, is that? <laughs> <laughs> took me a while, man, took me a while. Now, it's not very often that Disney want you to actually be able to see outside of one of their theme parks, but here, I think it really, really does work. Of course, you can stand here on the SS Columbia and look right out to sea. And of course, you can see the airport right over there in the distance and everything. You can see loads all the way around Tokyo Bay. Just goes to show how they did such a good job of putting this in where they did. It's just gorgeous, it really is. I've never known a theme park like it. And there's some brilliant theme parks out there and I love them all to bits, the ones I visited, but I bit, this I is just... I feel a bit bad for the UK park, it's really stunning. Yeah, it is crazy. On the SS Columbia, looking out at the view, 360. That's an amazing view out there, look at it. Really, really nice location. Someone having a jog over there as well, I suppose that road's probably not part of Disney property, or at least the footpath isn't just at the side. It's wow, it is really nice. Of course, you've got all the partner hotels all the way around the side as well. Oh, it is stunning, isn't it? This has got to be probably the best view in the park for looking out over everything. <laughs> Gorgeous. Really enjoyed a walk around the SS Columbia just there. And we're now back here in the Mediterranean Harbour to look at the wonderful views of Mount Prometheus here at Togo Disney Sea. It's been incredible, hasn't it? What a wonderful experience. It is the most beautiful theme park I've ever visited. It really is. And, uh, Touching, inspiring, magical. Yeah, Before definitely. You ask me three words. Touching, inspiring and magical. And the best thing is we will have another vlog from this park to come. Uh, and we are about to watch Fantasmic, and I'm going to make you guys wait until the next vlog with this one. It's been quite a long vlog from this park, and to be honest, it's been very, very overwhelming. Uh, so yes, the next vlog, we will share Fantasmic. However, we are going to watch it in a few moments' time, and we'll share our thoughts in the next video from this what we think of this one. Park. This is the end of our, our first day in the last park. It is crazy, that isn't feel? it? That's... But I think it'll be very fitting for the viewers if we save this very special version of Fantasmic for our final vlog from the trip. So, yes, this will be in part two, day two, from Tokyo Disney Sea. But I thought I'd just share with you the beautiful views around the Mediterranean Harbour and all the views. 
It is absolutely gorgeous. In terms of Fantasmic, you've got all the seating area around the front. To be fair, though, this is a 360 version of the show over in California and in Florida. Uh, of course, they are very different shows in itself, but it's still the same sort of format where it's all at the front and then you sort of either sit or stand around the back in like a semicircle. With this, it's 360. No matter where you are around here, you are going to get to see this beautiful show. That's all seating. We're actually standing and we're on a little platform just here. If you want to know where this is, it's literally right next to where the little uh, Venetian gondolas are, opposite there. Really, really nice little bridge going over. And then you've got this really nice little ridge area where you can look over and get some fantastic views. It's not that long for the show either, and we've, and we've got quite a good spot, I'd say. We have, yeah, an hour to go. Sometimes in Florida, you can be there two and a half, three hours before to get a good spot at peak time. So, yeah, really good. Anyway, we'll uh, talk about Fantasmic in day number two, and that'll share some nighttime shots as we have a walk around the beautiful Tokyo Disney Sea. We'll see you a little bit later on. <laughs> Okay, so we've just watched Fantasmic, and let's just say we're very, very impressed with what we've seen. Incredible. Incredible show, and we will share our full review in the day two vlog, which will be online soon here on Theme Park Worldwide, so stay tuned I'm for that one. I'm going to get so worked up. <laughs> it is the end of the trip when you see that. That is going to be the goodbye, and oh my god, wow. We'll save our thoughts, but yes, let's have a little walk around this park in the dark. Just know we're not Disney disappointed, Street. just know we are not disappointed. <laughs> you can see the park in the dark now, so let's have a little look. Mount Prometheus there, look at that, absolutely gorgeous. A really nice amount of lighting on it. I was saying to Alex actually, I like how it's not really floodlit, you know, it's just little subtle bits of purple I'm lighting on it, which is really nice. Are you alright there? <laughs> hey, we love this park, the best theme park in the world. Fantastic Very nice. Park. Thank, Very nice. You. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Start having a little walk around I love the, the bowing. I still love the bowing. So do I. I'm going to miss it when I get you home. Sean and I were actually saying, we're going to get to Weatherspoons next week, which is actually planned. We are actually going. <laughs> and they're going to bring like, all chocolate fudge cake. Like, thank you. Have a little bow. <laughs> <laughs> and look at me like, did you, I just gave you a fudge cake, mate. Don't get excited. <laughs> so I thought I'd spend the next sort of few minutes of this video and the end part of the video just going around this park and seeing it in the dark for the first time. I mean, I always love exploring Disney parks at night. And I think all of them look fantastic. Uh, so we'll start off in American Waterfront and make our way round. And of course, we've got the Hightower Hotel just round here, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Well, the twilight zone. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's amazing round here. You get a bit of a an actual feel, don't you, of the, of the places that are in this part and the, theme, and the areas You do, theme. it's definitely not fantasy themed, is it? No, it's all, all, yeah, it's all these different areas of the world, really. I'd say it's, so it's nice. a little bit like New York, but probably a little bit quieter than New York. <laughs> a lot of taxis honking and all. And all that kind of stuff. This is gorgeous. Look at this. Let's go around and I'll show you some nice shots. American Waterfront, you've got this little sub area off to the side, which is home to Toy Story Midway Mania. However, it is closed. <laughs> closed due to its uh, annual maintenance, unfortunately. So we won't be getting it this trip. Toy Story Mania. This is gorgeous. How many light bulbs can you spot, Alex? Come on, light bulb spot, please. And how many can you spot out? <laughs> Come on, Absolutely man. not. There's got to be some. Selfie. Look at this. You got a friend in Toyville. Is he getting selfies? Selfie. Oh, yeah. hey. Hello. Hello. You're on YouTube, Theme Park Worldwide. Yeah. Hello. Hope you've had a nice day. Alex has not stopped flirting this trip. Stop you. it. Yeah. <laughs> I told you in the last vlog. I'm not going home. I'm staying here. Look at this. It I'm is gorgeous. I've got two shirts left, so I'm going to pop over my mum. This just goes to show how much care they put in all these bulbs. I'm actually struggling to find one that's not out. That's amazing. Words 
really can't describe how I feel right now, seeing all this detail in person. I mean, videos just don't do it justice. I know I've said that so much, but really just walking around at night makes you realize even more how gorgeous this park is. Also, with it opening in 2001, it's surprising how good it still looks. I mean, they've really kept on top of this. You would think it was built last year, uh, never mind uh, 16 years ago. It really is crazy. I mean, you look at SS Columbia, all the light bulbs working all the way across. It's amazing. And of course, Hotel Hightower, really nice lighting on that. And of course, I love how it's got like lightning effects every so often as well. Really, really nice touch. What an amazing view from Cape Cod. This at the lighthouse, not been up here yet. Cape Cod, I love the name. Cape Cod, that's what it's called, this little area. Look at Prometheus, wow. And if you want a good meal, I've got to tell you, you've got to go to Cook Off over there. Cook Off, that's where we went earlier on, wasn't it? it cook did, off. Yeah, it was a nice Cook Off. We like the name of that one. Just saying the uh, light pollution actually makes it really good for filming and getting some footage. I think the volcano looks really nice with all the sort of light pollution in the background from the parking lot. So we just walked around the corner and it's literally a five minute wait for Aquatopia. Off we go. That, really. Look at this. I know we practically walked on. This is really cool, especially at night. Great interaction wow. on this ride. And it's a very, very advanced ride system as well, as I mentioned earlier on. Wave to your friends. Wave to you friends. get some good spinning action on this as well. Hey! <laughs> oh. Quite a good spin, actually. Amazing views in Mount Prometheus as well. It's really clever because you don't know where you're going. Woo! You literally could just be going anywhere. How good is this? Uh. Oh, which way? Uh -oh. Forwards. I feel like you're going to crash into other boats as well. It's really quite cool. A little torpedo there. You might get teased by the waterfalls on this as well. There we go. Uh oh. We're getting ever closer to some water fountain action. Woo! It's a little whirlpool here as well. Look at that. It's great. I love it. Port Discovery is a really good area of the park. All the areas are good. Outstanding, in fact. Oh, <laughs> this is really good wow. fun. Which way are we going? Are we oh. going to get teased? Are we going to get teased? Oh, there we are. Oh. Are we going to get teased? Oh, it's oh. 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 hey. hey. teased time. Oh. <laughs> really? Very nearly. Oh. That's so close. Oh, there we go. Oh. 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 <laughs> so cool. I love it. This is great. Oh. Oh. Are you busy yet, viewers? I am. What? <laughs> I love it. What a fantastic attraction. Konnichiwa! Woo! So good. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I love it. Wow. I really enjoyed Aquatopia. I thought that was a fantastic attraction and the interaction with other boats and I can imagine that to be even more fun in the daytime with the interaction with the other boats. However, at night time, I thought the views were incredible from it. It was great, wasn't it? It was amazing. So good. Are you enjoying really, your really tour good. of Tokyo Disney Sea? And it's dark. great, yeah. Like we've got an hour of just walking around and enjoying it. And it's really quiet. It's worth pointing out that this park earlier on was absolutely heaving. Now look at it. I mean, some of the attractions have still got massive queues, but in general, the footpaths and everything are a lot quieter, and it means you can have a good walk round, which is really cool. But I've lost out. Alex? Has he gone now? Oh. oh my god! Hello? Is it really him? Oh, yeah. Please keep your eye on the globe! <laughs> <laughs> I just spat the pizza out there, that scared out. Yeah. <laughs> so have a look in Lost River Delta and see what lighting we got down here, and then down into the Arabian Coast you, and Mermaid you, Lagoon. You know, I have to say this. I love Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favourite place in the world. It is amazing, it's great. isn't it? You know what? As a single man walking around a theme park, <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush, Sean. It's just very great. Like, <laughs> seeing, <laughs> seeing how enthusiastic. Look, they got their ears on, they got the Duffy ears, got 101 Dalmatians, Oswald. Like, who cares about Oswald? Clearly, these do. Um, but, oh. I, I, I'm enjoying the, the, this four or five days. You know what, Alex? I'm glad you are. Let's go see some Fuego! Fuego! <laughs> Yeah, 
look at raging spirits. How awesome does that look at night? It looks amazing in the day, but never mind in the dark. Look at that. That is stunning. All that fuego running all day, every day, 14 hour park days. That's incredible, isn't it? 14, hour, 14 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, about 10 billion pounds a day yeah. <laughs> in, in electricity bill. I'm trying to think how much that's cost. Look at that. That is incredible. Wow. I'd love to ride that at night at some point. Look at Arabian Coast, this looks stunning. Jasmine's flying carpets over there. A really nice mix of light, and you've got some oranges, some yellows, and all some darker colors, like some green, some purple, some reds. A really nice mix of colors around here. Can't wait to see the main sort of square area just around the corner by the double deck carousel. I've never been so excited in a park. This place is stunning, it really is. I'm One of the really best days excited. I've ever had in my life today. I'm really excited, this is incredible. One of the best days I've ever had. It is stunning. Wow, this is absolutely gorgeous. It's been my dream for years to walk around Disney Sea at night and just seeing it in person is so much better than I could have ever imagined. Look at the fibre optics as well on top of the large building just there. You can't even tell that that's a massive building with loads of rides inside. It is incredible, it really is. It's tucked away under the sea. <laughs> Look at that. My new favourite theme park in the world, Tokyo Disney Sea. The one that I've been waiting for, Mysterious Island. Wow. 360 immersive theming. Lit up beautifully. Again, much like the front of Mount Prometheus. Not too much in terms of lighting, just enough to add that extra layer, that extra texture to it. And it is gorgeous. The Nautilus down there. Journey to the center of the Earth. Wow. Breathtaking. It really is. on this planet. I've never had such an amazing day at a theme park. Today has been an incredible day, a momentous day for theme park worldwide. An amazing trip for me and Alex. And Don't, don't give me the moment. It, it, it's your it's moment. crazy, isn't it? We're about to ride what is my favorite ride out there in the world and my favorite theme park in the world, Journey to the Center of the Earth, for the third time today. We've done so many rides. It's been incredible. And when we come off, we'll make our way down to the park exit and Mediterranean Harbor and summarize on this truly memorable and incredible day. We'll see you when we come on. A fantastic last ride of the day there on journey to the center of the earth. And here we are, wow. A brand new number one part for me and I think Alex too. Yeah. I mean, this place is gorgeous. What you're seeing right now on YouTube on camera really doesn't summarize this at all. The scale. What you see here is a little screen full of stuff. You don't see everything around the 360 of it. Well, I'll try my best to show you. We see people in dressing gowns wow. in their bedrooms, yeah. sat in the window, just admiring the view out the window. We see. I would love to be up there right now in this hotel, Hotel Miracosta, all the way around here with views into the park. We see a, a, a Disney-built volcano. I know with Ori Oriental Land, of course, as well. We see a volcano that is still up and it's still puffing smoke out every now and then. We see a Tower of Terror, which is so different from the rest. I see a sailing ship Columbian three times the size of the ones I'm used to. And I could give you a thousand more examples. Today's been incredible, and you know what? 
I'm not going to get too deep into it right now, but I can confirm this is my number one theme park now in the world. It's gorgeous, it's got so much charm, the best theming I've ever seen, and each area is so immersive. Uh, yeah, I just love it so much, I really do. The seven areas of this park, all of them, I love the names as well. It's just so nice, it flows beautifully from each other. And you know what? That is it, the end of our day here at Tokyo Disney Sea. It's been incredible. The best day I've ever had at a theme park by a long way. And that doesn't mean that I don't love every other theme park I've been to because I do I appreciate each part of what it is. But this one has got that special Does place. It feel like 14 hours ago, we stood just through there, anticipating, waiting to see that view for the first time. It 14 is crazy. hours of a park day, incredible. And with some of the last people out tonight as well, I do recommend it if you visit these Disney parks, no matter which Disney park you go to in the world, all 12 of them, be one of the last guests out if you can do, because it's a really special feeling. Thinking there's been, what, probably 50 odd thousand people in here today, and we're within the last few hundred, if that to go out tonight. It's really, really nice. On that note, we're going to leave you with a nice view of Mount Prometheus and the Mediterranean Harbour. And from Tokyo Disney Sea, that means it's time to cue those credits. credits. See you later, guys. Tokyo Disney Sea.